Ching Bing. Uh, it is the Kempex Scrum so far. It's Sam and Michael. Um, yeah, updates from me. Um, I have, yeah, I was doing a, a, a teleconference with um, some folks from the NHS, National Health Service here in the UK, along with um, Steve, who's the guy who originally funded some of the local support work, and uh, his colleague Mina, Mina, who has a specialty in this healthcare area. Anyway, this is for this NHS wiki um, project relating to self-prescribing, which is this, uh, it seems, as I understand it, it's all about having people like not take drugs uh, and instead of being given drugs by their doctors, being told, oh, you should go and volunteer picking apples or something along those what? lines. Um, what? You should volunteer what? Going and picking apples or just, you know, that basically rather that, that in some cases, you know, it's like, oh, you should go and uh, like, I don't know, go and participate in this event that's taking place next week. It's, it's sort of getting, I think it's about getting doctors to sort of prescribe like social solutions rather than um, drugs all the time. What does that have to do with a wiki? Well, they've got like, there's a big initiative related to doing all of this and there's lots of people like you know brainstorming and publishing papers and this that and the other and the powers that be in the nhs i think are thinking that it uh what's the word uh there is like all these static documents and they're going out of date and what they want is a sort of a collaborative zone where the different stakeholders can be you know putting different documents up and they can be sort of collaboratively edited by different people um to sort of just make it all work better. And are they thinking off the shelf? Well, they're thinking small budget and tight time frame. So I've, I said to them, it's going to have to be off the shelf because we can't build anything, you know, bespoke or custom in that time. So um, I put together a four page uh, rip, kind of like what we could do for them. And they, we got to the second round, which is, you know, um, Speaking to them about it, I mean, they, they may have like nine or ten other people who also got to that stage, um, uh, but they seemed, they, they very much liked the people that we brought in uh, who are sort of UK the local healthcare specialists. And um, yeah, so, so we'll see. I mean, you know, I mean, this is a ridiculous thing about all of these grants and everything is you can spend so much time, you know, developing and presenting and telling people about them. Um, for potentially no no outcome whatsoever, um, and it's I mean it, you know it reminds me of you know contractors coming to my house and and I get you know quotes off three or four of them and only one person gets any money. Um, so it's right. uh, there we go. Yeah, so we'll see. Um, so that was that, and then that's basically it for what I've been able to do. Um, yeah, hoping to move forward on the async. Voting project I did manage this morning connecting with the rush to um uh like start to get access head round this doco doku setup that he's set up. Um how are things going with you, Michael? Good, I had some <clears throat> errands to run, but I did um put in a quick fix for that change for the activity report. And yes, yes, with the um so uh, the emails. I think the students are using Binghamton.edu, so they should be easy to. They are. They are. They are. Uh, that is a, what. Yes, I'm just looking at it now, and yes, that is just what I needed. Yeah, some of them will be using um, other, but yeah. Yeah, probably. But yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So that was about it on that front. And then you were saying that we're going to do a kickoff. Yeah, yeah. That, well, at least that's the idea. I mean, well, we can do it. Oh. You and you and I. Obviously, we, we had the Elixir mob as well. Um, yeah, that was in, that yeah. was did 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 um, just have you have you had a chance to review some of the court the Udemy course now? No, I haven't. I oh, should, okay. I should some point yeah, yeah do you, i mean we've got like a code that gives you uh, yeah access. i have access to it have access. okay cool all right great yeah i was just thinking that what we should do is share that um like 
I wonder if I just share the link. Like the, the, the that listing of the you know activity of the different people should just go straight into the data. Like almost we could I mean have a bot that that where the data mine. I wonder if I can just post that link there. Let's see. Well, I wouldn't. Uh, that has email, so you probably don't want to. No, share I'm not doing the email one. I'm not doing the email one. Just the, the one with the names. One, as, a, as I said, the other one's actually out of date. But yeah. When you say out of date, <laughs> apparently, I thought I had changed the date, but it's not. Okay. So, it's actually an old, from like January. Oh, okay. Time, apparently, I found out it was actually from January. Okay. I thought I, I, I distinctly remember changing the date, but apparently okay. I did. Right. Interesting. Uh, here. So I said, um, the, this is a activity ranking from MPC. Uh, turns out. It's actually from January 20th. From Jan. Um, the new one I sent you was actually. Oh, okay. All right. The accurate one for this. Yeah. Work. Oh well, well, maybe you can share the accurate one without the emails. Yeah, I'll do. Yeah. yeah, when you have a chance. Great. I mean, the interesting thing was is that I was going through that last night, and I did reach out to a couple of people, um, and just just to say hi, and um, you know, actually had some interesting conversations off the back of it. So it's already been useful. Uh, it turns out that that Jake Anderson is um, is actually working for I think a nonprofit in downtown St. Charles, Illinois. Mm -hmm. And so I've created a new, and like he's doing like coding and he's got the stuff up on GitHub and stuff. And so, uh, yeah, I've created a new Slack channel for him off, off, off that. So, yeah, that's uh, all time well spent, I think. I was had an interesting con con conversation with Hinesh about, um, um, I'm gonna have to follow up on um, coming with Hinesh about uh, paid projects and so on. Anyway, um, yes. Oh, that's all good fun. Um, yeah, I wonder. Uh, just ask Aresh. Uh, will you join us? That's our scrum, basically. Did him briefly come in and then he dropped out? Oh, of the hangout. You were talking, yeah, you were talking about the list, but oh, okay, yeah, he maybe he's experiencing connectivity issues. Um, okay, um, well, what what I can I think sensibly do there, I mean, you may not be interested, um, is I can show you where I got to with a rest with this digital ocean thing, um. You can share your screen too. I, I will. I'm trying to work out. I'm trying. To, I'm, I'm removing all of the embarrassing things oh. first. Uh, oh, Aresh is here. Hey, Aresh. Hey, hey, hello. Aresh. hey how's it going? We were talking about another other thing, so I quit it from there. I know. Oh, you quit because we were talking about another thing? Hey, no. Well, I was late, so I want. I wanted to this. Interrupt you or to interrupt you because you were talking about other things. <laughs> oh well, in, in the scrum we always we chat about you know whatever the um the, the you know it's like a scrum of scrums. So yeah, Michael and I uh, are collaborating on another project called Community Support, which is related to data mining and uh, but and analyzing the activity of people in the Slack chat. But um, you are here now, which is great. Uh, uh, um, Might they be relevant to what we're about to do here, Michael? You. Don't think it'll be relevant to. I think a, it will, and actually will be because I. Go on. I'm probably going to request something. All right. It'll. Everything is connected. Um, Aresh, how are things going with you? Any, any, anything to report? Uh, well, not really. The only thing that I did last week or tomorrow was updating the documentation or providing some documentation about how to use Doku mm -hmm. uh, to deploy. New application or update part of the current async bolter command. Right. Great. Yes, and I think you also you also collected some resources on um, Node best practices. Uh, yes, you are right. <laughs> yeah, great, great, great stuff. 
We've also had Vu join us. Hello, Vu. How are you doing? Can you hear us OK? Hi there, Vu. Yeah, maybe you're, you're uh, auditing. Cool. No worries. No problem at all, Vu. Every, everyone, welcome. So well, that's we've done our scrum. Uh, checked in with everybody. Nobody blocked by anything. Um, we're into what we're doing now, regular Wednesdays, which is the sort of retro slash kickoff for um, the next week of activity on uh, on the async voter. And yeah, I guess what I had been about to do was just to show Michael my progress on the one thing that was my you know responsibility, which was like learning how to uh, deploy things. So so I've got with with Aresh's help, I've got set up now so that I can um, kind of run these, I guess, Docker, Docker commands here uh, from SSH over. This is our instance that we've got on DigitalOcean. And so, yeah, I, I guess what I'd love to do is deploy a change. I kind of, I got as far as looking at the apps. So the documentation now, if I can just find it, which you very ably put in the wiki there, Aresh, very much appreciated. Uh, I'll do Slack command. Here we go. Um, there. So, okay, yeah, and so I haven't gone through each of this step by step, but I guess that I, I will definitely do that today, and I will I will have done my element. I, I would love to also go through the all the various different node resources that you've shared, Aresh. I haven't had a chance to do that yet, but uh, yeah, that that's good. Gone. Okay, but basically, you only have to add a new remote in I, your grid repository. Mm -hmm. uh, you can just copy and paste that in your console inside your yeah. current yeah, code. In the, um... And just get, uh, and after that, just you have to execute uh, git push. Uh, right, OK. Yes, and what we're talking about, we, we want to get to where we have you know, uh, like at least a, a production and a staging mm -hmm. so that we can have places to play with and, and what have you. But but yeah, this is, um, you know, thanks so much for putting that documentation together. And I'm quite excited about this, as you say, for sort of this, like sort of a poor man's Heroku. Like, we can't really, I mean, that, uh, I'm excited. Wow. Like, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll start playing with this. It makes me think in the longer term about getting some kind of, well, particularly well, DigitalOcean have offered us $100. There's not very really much. But I think we have like ongoing credits from Azure. So maybe if I can get Docker set up on Azure, we can have like a a, a cheaper alternative to um uh yeah, to Heroku. Because to be honest, I'm really happy yeah. with the, the, the new command line interface. I don't really need Heroku's WYSIWYG. whatever. Does Azure offer like Linux boxes or because that's a Microsoft thing, right? Yeah, that's a good question. Um that Federico might answer for us. Yeah. Uh I I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Um, so, yeah, last week, I mean, we we just sort of kind of got ourselves together. Uh, what Michael and I have been doing for the website, one project is kind of bringing tickets each week that we're kind of, we want to vote on and we want to like make progress on. Um, we're, we're sort of more in a kind of getting set up phase here for, um, I'm using this camera, it's not working for me anymore. Oh, well. Oh, there you go. Woo! Um, so, uh, I mean, I haven't really grabbed new tickets to vote on. I guess what we might just do is have a moment of retrospective. <laughs> um, so uh, it, is the having the meeting at this time on a Wednesday, kind of trying to do the kickoff, that make, make sense? Uh, well, anything we'd like to change about the process? Has, have you run this meeting before? Because I've never seen it. No, basically this oh. last Wednesday, one week ago, Aresh and I got together. I mean, we discussed in the Async Voter channel to have, uh -huh. you know, kind of like a like we're doing on Fridays for website one, uh, to do something, do that for um, Async Voter. And so Aresh and I got together last Wednesday, and we kind of were like, oh, yeah, we need to get some stuff sorted out. You know, Aresh's new prototype is awesome. We're using it. It's great. But we need to get able to deploy it. Aresh, I think, uh, particularly concerned with refactoring the Node.js code um, and so on. And so, yeah, we kind of took the, 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 the responsibilities where Aresh was going to get some well, we Node.js resources together and do some documentation on how Docker works, and I was going to like learn how to get do, do the Docker deployments. So uh, as it happens, I also so um, 
was it Raphael was in yesterday and looking to get back involved and I went through just sort of start like I think he'd been out of the loop and like how do I even do um you know pull, should I go from a feature branch or what should I be doing and um I, I did a quick pull request based on that which he met he may now like wrap a test around but uh so uh I guess what we might do unless it's early for a retrospective in as much as people are not even really sure what we're doing um what I was going to say here is, is there, should we just do a check of, well, this is what we often do in the marketing meeting, a check of what what the main things people what are, they want to get done or get sorted out. Um, Michael, you already mentioned that you had, you're going to have, you had a request for something? Yes, I do. Yes, uh, do you have So, basically, I was looking at the code and we're, we have a Redis instance mm -hmm. that we're using in line right now. Mm -hmm. And from what I understand, it basically throws away mm -hmm. each ballots results or mm -hmm. every time a new vote is started. Yep. So actually for data analytics reasons, it would be nice to mm -hmm. have a, like a permanent record of who voted on what mm -hmm. and when. Yep. Uh, actually, I use Redis, but I use some, well, I, I use Redis to, to persist data. So the data is, is really persistent in the database. Uh, but perhaps Redis is not the, the, the best um, uh, persistent engine to, to use in, in this application. But uh, I, I use Redis just because I wanted to persist the state when the server restart of the application crash. So, so it's it's so it's so the votes are all stored, but they're stored in Redis. Yes, the, the all the things are being stored in Redis. Mm -hmm. So, how do you go back and get an old an old vote? Uh, I know I don't have the code in front of me by, right now, but basically, um, periodically, Redis uh, save the data. I'm saving, uh, if I remember, I'm saving the who opened the, the voting session, uh, who gave some votes. Mm -hmm. I'm saving those kind of things in a in a simpler way, and on every interaction the application consults or check that data data in Redis, fetch that data from Redis and update it. OK, because I thought Redis was like a key. It's a key, it's a key value I store, you but you can, store, you can store arbitrary JSON objects in it. Right, I thought you were overwriting the key every time a new vote came in. That's what it seemed like to me in the code. Hmm. Well, maybe that's something that we can, we can check. Yeah, and the other thing is, I, it would be nice to know the time too when the vote was okay, when when the vote was received. Sure. Uh, la, 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 la. Yes. So I mean, I, I spent a while in yesterday's um, from explaining to uh, Raphael about the different elements that we have um probably the things that you're describing there actually like if we want to move quickly like adding timing of the votes and just and then giving you access to, to redis if you want to pull data and start doing analysis on it that's probably the the way to go in the longer term uh connecting this it up so that it actually stores it in this rest api you know that we built previously might be a way to go arash and i discussed that last week and we said in the first instance, let's focus on just making sure that we have a sustainable, you know, there's like a deployment pipeline, we've got production, we've got staging, that we fix some of the sort of trivial uh, user interface issues. And, you know, but the, I, I think in the long run, in the longer term, we want to be able to support, you know, uh, understanding, you know, who's participating in votes, giving them karma credit for it, you know, um, understanding the community better, better supporting these things, right? Yes, well, maybe we we could switch to MongoDB. That is, it looks like 
a more appropriate uh, database engine to persist data and, and perhaps it's more easier to understand by other person or people because mm -hmm. Redis is used to queues to to yes, mm -hmm. to, to queues. Um, I wanted to experiment with Redis, so I saw that I can um, add that feature of, of persist the bots easily with Redis. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th I think it was a good it was a good choice. I don't from my, I don't think there's any criticism of the choice from our, our side. Yeah. You know, and I think Redis actually may continue to be a good a good option. You know, MongoDB is a possibility. Async Voter API uses MongoDB mm. already. So, and we did spend a long time crafting this whole setup, and then it has a whole admin interface or whatever. If we another option is to plug it into the microservices architecture and have it persist stuff over the REST interface. Mm. Uh, uh, well, I, go on. I, I not. I suppose the, the probably Redis has a log, right? Because yeah. Redis is in memory, there must be some kind of logging. I don't yeah, well, know. But Redis can crash and come back up and still have the stuff in it. Right. Right. Uh, yes, but Redis don't, well, uh, how to say this? Uh, it don't um, ensure data consistency. So I mean that from time to time, it uh, save the data. It's, mm -hmm. It's something that you cannot control. You can say, I want to save the data every two seconds or also. And mm -hmm. if something happened between <laughs> that period, you will lose data. So mm -hmm. uh, Mongo okay. also, also has its problems, but perhaps you you, you can right. avoid that kind of things. Yeah. Well, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move us on from this. Because there's there's a lot of stuff here, and, and, it, and it's good. And, and I think what we probably want to do is is get tickets you know created on it and possibly voted on and people take the responsibility for them um what we're um that was from my previous meeting different thing um uh i guess the things for for me is i really want to get you know staging production uh set up uh practice deploying and then uh but yeah arrest what are the key things that you're uh thinking about or want to push forward for on uh, well, the first thing is perhaps identifying what are the most demanding new, uh, features by by yeah. other members because I found there that there are some other suggestions like adding a, a no vote button or right. no decision button. So I would like to keep um, satisfying those users. Absolutely. <laughs> And then my my concern is about to refactor the code or right. to to build something to make up the code a little bit or so. Sure, sure. All right. Well, I think we've got all the things down there. Maybe if we start with uh, a resh from the refactoring and, and and those things, let's have a little look at if we come in here. Is it going? Async slash commandos going there. Uh, and just look at the issues from there. Not waffles, not necessarily so helpful here. So yeah, I just meant so this the no opinion button was this. Oh. We, we were doing a website one vote, and it was Romu who's a new person, and it was you know he was unsure, and and he said, oh, you know, oh, I, I don't want to vote, and he suggested, oh, maybe there could be a no opinion button. Um, just one person, you know, it could be something to add that was that was helpful. Um, difficult, difficult to know. I've got worked on that issue there. Um, one of the things that, I mean, I've got all the little bits and pieces of things from people or what have you. Um, I, I, I guess, do we have, uh, apart from like, we had these two issues. One was the spelling, that's trivial. One was the no opinion button. Um, are there any other user interface features that we, know that people want or are concerned about? Uh, well, I'm not sure. Perhaps we could, we could run a survey or something like that uh, and, um, and listen to the people in the, on the first hand. You mentioned something about the notifications or mentions. Uh, uh, um, yeah, I mean, there's things that I've talked about. Um, I mean, maybe the thing to do, like we we tried to do this last week and failed because um, the, the the instance was actually down at the time. Let's just for our purposes, should we just 
uh, have a doesn't mean doesn't mean that we're committing to doing it, but should we just have a vote on this this ticket, and that will allow us to sort of go through the user interface and just refresh our memories about those things. Yeah, go on, things. So we'll do slash vote. Is that the right slash? Is it forward slash? Mm -hmm. Go issue. There we go. So if we all just want to have a quick vote on that, I'm just going to take a little screenshot. So I guess, yeah, I mean, that, that reminds me of two things that were sort of features of some of the previous um, the previous things, which are that at the moment when this is coming in, there's no kind of alert to the channel that a vote has taken place. And that's not such a big deal in the, um, you know, when we're doing it simultaneously like this, but using it for asynchronous voting, um, yeah, there's a, there's a notification issue. I'll just do my vote, do that. Yeah, so it, I guess it does have, it has, we get, obviously the fact that this is yellow highlighted, that su suggests to me that, you know, it's notifying the person that they've, they've done it, so that's great. Yeah, all right, so that's voted on. Working as intended, fantastic. Um, and we'll put that at least into the ready. Um, but yeah, so I don't know where the issues have, where have the issues gone? So, there we go, I was like, yeah. So there was this one I hear like updating the channel when a, when a vote comes in. That's particularly, particularly important for async votes. The, the model that I've sort of slipped into is is running more, you know, active kickoffs, and, and I'm using it more uh, synchronously at the moment. Um, and then update the channel when a vote comes in. And include so the other one was like including the title of the issue when um, when you vote. So like at the from from the outs at the moment for the person outside looking at the like if we if we look at website one from say the previous kickoff that we had as a, as a trait, we obviously it's, it's great that we have, I mean, as well as in the Redis, we have the, the store of, um, you know, people can see the history history of this, but sort of scanning it, you've just got the link to the, the waffle card or what have you, and, and you can't, without clicking through, see which, which was the vote that it is, so. Yes, you, you lost the, that information. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, in, if you well, if we paste the GitHub link directly, we get a little crew in the URL. That's true. That's true. And we waffle. We lost this information. Yes. Yes. Um, it's a uh, swings and roundabouts there, isn't it? The um, uh, I mean, the way I had it set up previously, in the, in the previous oh, what's it called prototype was the voting thing had you know the URL, and then the name. Mm -hmm. You can do that if you want. Um, yeah, you, can, uh, you can write whatever you want in uh, together the voter command. Oh, OK. So what yeah, can happen? Uh, something will, will, what will happen to the hyper? But we could, we, could, we could see how that goes. If we, where was that other one that we could vote? So well, uh, you've, got the you've got to change your vote. But like, here's one. So there's this updating the channel when a vote comes in. So that's like this one. If I take that, if I can even find it in here. Uh, well, it doesn't really matter. I'll find it in a moment. But yeah, so we can see, as a rush is saying, one of the issues there is voting voter. So I can stick, I could stick this here, but I could say, I could say this is, um, I guess even with the GitHub link, we're not getting much information there. But this is, if I, if I put in, the, and I say update channel with, um, at here when, um, uh, someone votes like that. Oh, okay, so actually, it looks like if if the hyperlink still works there, then that feature is kind of supported in the first pass. So, 
Do, does the current bot, this async bot, does it have the ability to... What's not clear to me, just looking at the code, is how it's interfacing with Slack. Because it looks like it's an express app, which means that Slack is talking to it. Yeah, I think it is. So how does it um, send? I, I, I understand your question, Michael. I wonder if we might put that to the end rather than diving into it now. No, I'm asking because of how this this actual ticket we're going to vote on. Uh, oh, okay. So like, like, oh yeah. If if it would, how would it ping Slack? Well, it's already pinging Slack when somebody votes. I think. Oh, maybe. I th I'm, it's not completely clear. To okay. Me. How does uh, it work? Okay, but yeah, if it's relevant to the vote, then then fair enough. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. So, we'll, so the, what we're talking about here is. I mean, at the moment, if somebody votes, it will the the channel is updated because it like replaces the please choose a difficulty with please choose a difficulty, and it adds their name to the end of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I was sort of assuming that just that it wouldn't be too difficult. We could just have it add an at here, but but maybe that wouldn't cause the update that I'm I'm, I'm thinking of. So but so maybe yeah maybe uh, Arash, do you want to uh, answer Michael's question? Uh, well, I didn't understand very well the question, but I think mm -hmm. that he was wondering how this works. Mm -hmm. um, you have, yeah, well, the, the Slack API provides many things, many ways to communicate with it. You can use the, uh, the API with a REST endpoint, or you can use it with a streaming uh, communication. But in, in this bot or this application is using the Slack command. When you type a Slack command, uh, there is an endpoint on, on on our server, we receive that uh, request and returns a, a JSON, which is uh, interpreted by the Slack platform as an embedded form or embedded button. Yes, well, there, yeah, in, in the that is the JSON that we are sending. So we uh, we send we send this back to the to, to Slack. Yes, we send that our, our server, and we server. send this back. So you will send that JSON, and that JSON is rendered by Slack. Mm -hmm. um, you can see there are these there are three button buttons holding mm -hmm. JSON. And um, when every time that a person click on one button, uh, mm -hmm. the action endpoint is hit by Slack. You can find this endpoint. Ah, okay, so, those those the, so, the, so when a person clicks the button, it hits the action endpoint. Yeah. And um, there we get some parameters um, mm -hmm. storing them in Redis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think we return another JSON to update the the form in Slack. Right. In Slack yeah. Channel. So the, the so we've got one in in this one. Right. In this case, if it's a reveal request, then it sends back the new format that the form is going to take, and it's not form anymore. And then in this one. So this is updating the Redis, the votes mm -hmm. push? Yes. Is that right? And then repository set. So something. And then we've got, and I guess this format register, did this, that format register that updates the, um, that updates, yeah, who, who's, who's voted so far. Right. Yeah. But so this new request that you're putting in now, would actually, wouldn't you be implying that you'd want a new message sent? Well, I don't know. I don't know. It, I mean, the, the, what, the, 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 like, I think we have this situation here, like, where if I click on one of these now, it's going to update this and it's going to put my username in there. Mm -hmm. And I think, in principle, if I wasn't in the channel, right, then I would, it would give me like a, a little one on here. But I am in the channel, so it doesn't. So it's, it, I think, like if somebody votes and if we added at here into this, then in principle for the other people who are not the voters, it would um, you know kind of turn this from a well actually I guess maybe at here is in it already, um, so maybe it's, yeah, that would have no impact whatsoever. That way I'm thinking even yeah. And what you're saying, Michael, is you know in order to actually do to to sort of highlight it to people, it would require uh, an extra message to be posted to Slack. Um, yeah, message. 
I don't know if if you tried if we try to bolt give a new bolt or open a new bolt session while you are in another channel, this mm -hmm. will notify you or not. Perhaps it's the way you are testing it because you are actually mm -hmm. in the same channel where we are running the the, the session button session. So perhaps the, those alerts are not uh, notifying you because you are actually in the yeah. channel. Yeah, I think but, that's right. I think you're absolutely right, Aris. That that, that is my perfect. hypothesis. I know as well. And also, it's possible to to write new messages. But oh, okay. well, is it? Yep, through this this setup here, we can we can we can. Put, you're saying it's uh, there's some code we can put in here that it would then not just update the um, existing form, but we could post a new message. Yes, it's possible. If I'm not sure where, but in the JSON there is a channel ID somewhere, or oh yeah, there is a channel ID, and you can a message ID, and you can both update previous messages and create new ones. But well, I'm okay. concerned about the the user experience or, or the interaction sure. because if you just send more messages mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. the into the channel, perhaps you mess a little bit the 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 votation or the session because it's it's because it's lovely when you scroll scroll it up and see the result of previous voting session just in a single form or in a single yes. place. Yes. Oh, absolutely. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I agree. The um, go on, Michael. From what I understood was the at the same time you're saying if this is truly being used asynchronously, mm -hmm. then it, it has a higher chance of just being lost in chat. Yeah, that, that's what I've seen happen with the local support uh, ones, is that, um, yeah, like like this actually, as it stands, you know, for, 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 for voting synchronously, we don't need the notifications. It, it's, mm -hmm. it's irrelevant. And, 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 and it's beautiful kind of as it is. And, and probably for, you know, uh, oh God, what's the word? If we were to add the notifications and it was posting new things, like for this one now, it would seem completely surplus to requirement because we're all looking at it. Um, uh, but yeah, for the for the ones like we we had, uh, what I noticed was, I mean, then this may be a reflection of of um, see these are ones that we did again. They were synchronous in the local support when we've been using the previous like my bot that was kind of like much more great like my bot previously it at channeled to start with. And then every update was an at here uh, when we were doing it kind of offline. And that tended to get more people voting, but there were there were some that we had. Th th this, I think, was done asynchronously. I, I, I was just, yeah. And then, you know, if it's a noisy channel, the, the, the problem is, is that people coming into the channel don't realize that there's a vote taking place. If you know what I mean, Aresh. Um, yes, I understand that. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I think that we are not running an asynchronous voting sessions. Mm. To be honest, we are just running synchron another way to. We are how to say this? Uh, the current voting sessions are not really asynchronously because uh, mm -hmm. two persons. Well, because you cannot prevent that the mess the channel be. Uh, mix it with another messages. Right, or right. right. The, perhaps you, we need a, I don't know if, if we need an external web interface so people can just press the button there whenever they want at the, mm. at the, mm. at the, two days later or a week later. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. So I, I'm not sure how to solve this problem in a channel where we can have mixed messages. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 it's interesting. It, it seems to me. Yeah, I mean, uh, also the the but we could we could be developing two related apps, one of which that is yeah you could sync develop. asynchronous and the other one is synchronous. Like it, you know, like you can choose to start one or the other. You know, um, yeah. So we already, go on. Uh, I was going to say we do have the asynchronous bot. Yeah, which I which I turned off to save money and. The presence of the two of them has caused confusion to some people because they're like, "How do I use one versus the other?" Um, yes, yeah. So, so I guess I mean we we could say that this issue actually is kind of maybe we shouldn't be just trying to vote on this because you know it's just making it too complicated. I mean, I, I guess what I'm thinking of if we can post new messages if it is running in the async vote i mean in some ways um 
would it make sense that when it like either this is this maybe just completely crazy but let's say that when you voted it deleted this one and it reinserted the same like rather than kind of doing it in place that it did it as a new message but updated like updated the form do you know what i mean yeah you, you want to have uh this form as uh, so the last message of right the basically message. anytime anybody votes it always mm -hmm. ensures that it's the last message and in the the thing so it's kind of constantly brought to the front if it's an ongoing vote mm, well i'm not sure if we'll, i think we could do that i'm not sure if we will get some problems because we are deleting places where people can press on or we are yeah doing, yeah I, it, it, i'm not sure but yeah, it may be more trouble than it's worth. Uh, I, I think it's like it, it's doable, but maybe we shouldn't do it. But sh shall we just, based on that discussion now, shall we have a vote on, on this? Yeah, sure. Do you want to vote on it? Did you vote? I voted. I didn't get a um, an update. I was outside that channel. Right, but you won't because at the moment it's only at Tansaku. So, oh, okay. But, um, and I think because it's already out here, so yeah, so there we go, okay. Yeah, so I was I was just saying hard because based there on what we're are. talking about, I think getting the user experience right to meet the needs of both asynchronous and synchronous voting, which is what this is related to, would be kind of hard. But, but I, I think it about something. Uh, let's say that you run a synchronous vote there and another person Connects to the channel or see the, the it's this notification in, in the mobile phone two hours later. So when they see the little bubble, little red <laughs> alert in the mobile, mobile or, or in the browser, uh -huh. I think he will scroll up to see mm -hmm. why he was disturbed, and, and he can see the form and press the button. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure if this is. Uh, Really, is are actually a problem or not? I know, sir. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm happy to go with medium. We'll call this a medium, but I think it's like there's all sorts of weird side effects. We can kind of agree, and yeah, there's the how what the experience is like on mobile, and and so on. Um, makes me think that from a UX point of view, it's kind of kind of hard. Um, now, is this one? What is this actually called? I, I don't like to be disturbed for the same thing many times. So when every time I I, I yes. read or get a notification of here or everyone, I I try to read it. So mm -hmm. if I get in those kind of notification over mm -hmm. and over for the same thing, in this case this voting session, I get annoyed as easily. I, I, well, <laughs> because... I, I I agree. I mean, I think that's also solvable though in that you could have a system where it was backing off. So basically, if the votes are within, you know, let's say 20 minutes of each other, or even like five minutes, that it wouldn't alert. But if it's longer, like, I think what I specifically see as the problem is, if we have a vote, and then the thing is completely scrolled off the, off the page, mm -hmm. and no one sees it, then we've got to with two votes, we're waiting for somebody else to do something. I mean, I, you, I guess you can say, hey, you should just like, if, if the person cares enough about the vote, they should at channel and get people to, um, to vote, well, but in that on. case, perhaps we could have another build button there. So we mm. could, if you yeah. press that that button, you yeah, yeah. perhaps you relocate <laughs> that message at the end of the chat. Mm. Uh, this could be a temporal solution to see if if this is a real problem or not. Yeah, yeah. Without touching touching a lot the existing code. Well, the existing code is a mess, but I mean that we could implement this as a separate little separate. Yeah, yeah. Feature. It, it seems like there's lots of different things, and and, and I think uh, this this is so uh, in discussion. It seems uh, like there are lots of UX complexities. Here, so we should be cautious about implementing this. I, I think, I think, yeah. Uh, as I was just doing there, it's easy to think of complex solutions that then, then, yeah. So, but that's we've, we've certainly been voting on some tickets there. Was there one more ticket that we should? 
I guess we, we, we're not, you know, we, nobody brought specific tickets. Uh, when we saw here, actually, for this one, um, uh, actually seems like we can do this with current interface. I mean, I guess what the current interface doesn't, doesn't prompt people to do is to add that information. Yeah, but perhaps we, we could add a more height, a height test or include this as a height test, as a crew in, in the, when you, yeah, when just you a run, say, yeah, exactly. Now it only displays an uh, issue as an optional argument, so we can also add right. uh, issue and description or something. Yeah, so, so I mean, at the moment when we, when we do the thing like, uh, what is this number, eight, so uh, the, like if I take the card and I do the vote, like here, it yeah. could like just say title issue there, and then people would write the title, so include title um, in vote, and then they would just they would just do it, and they would know to do it, and it would just work. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I think that, that that's a wonderful simple solution. I mean, anytime we can like solve things without adding any code. No, well, we had to add a little. Well, no, no. Yeah, we just had, we change a little bit of text. Yeah, is we can change this text text in the Slack uh, dashboard to configure. Right. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Slack yeah. Uh, yeah. We could just change uh, text prompt in Slack dashboard uh, to uh, suggest to user to include title. I mean, there's a more complex one where we would sort of pull out the API and everything. But I love that simplicity. Should we just have a quick vote on on that then, based on that discussion? Unless there are any more questions. Yes, let's do it. Yes. All right. There has been some voting. Uh, and I want to, I want to indicate the result of that vote over here. Um, is now done, and we'll put that up in the bottom. Okay, so um, yeah, so we've we've got. I guess did that help with your concern, Arif, about different features and their. Uh, yeah, well, we have decided by ourselves which are the next uh, or the most important features. Well, it's not bad. Yeah. Uh, well. Um, especially that one, I, I didn't thought that you have that problem with, <laughs> or I didn't realize that you have that problem when identifying issues, identifying previous votes, but it's true. Mm -hmm. You need to look or to hear other people's opinions, or mm -hmm. opinions to discover those kind of things. Uh, yeah, good stuff. Uh, so we could, I guess we'll leave doing any assignments to, to the end there. Um, the other one is the refactoring thing, and yeah, you've got, you know, some different things there and some suggestions and so on. Um, I guess I'm sort of thinking about moving us on, like, you know, we've been so we've been going for about half an hour, or, or if not more. Um, you know, I just need to sort of sit down and do some of those things. We've we've done some, done some voting. Uh, with, with the, obviously, there's there's lots of other things here. Michael's interests. Uh, I guess you know more tickets can be created from you know this these sets of suggestions you've got here from Michael's uh, desires. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I can practice getting Michael set up. I could you know as for me, I could uh, add Michael with access to uh, to Do as me practicing getting somebody else involved. Um, so I guess I'm tempted to move it to just opt for the items in the ready column. Uh, is this actually, this is different. That's completely different. I'm just going to move, I'm going to move that down to the bottom. That was from the React thing. Do we want, and that is also from that as well, isn't it? Yes. So do we just want to do it, any assignment? Does any of these three tickets that we've voted on, does anybody want to take the lead on any of these? Well, I will change the first one. It's, it's okay. a, right now, it's something very easy. Excellent. Yep. So we've got a resh on that one. Uh, what have we got? The 
I, I think we've kind of agreed that we shouldn't do this one. Does anybody want to take the lead on adding a no opinion button? I will. Yeah? Cool. You'll probably give me a reason to look at the code. Yeah, that would be excellent. Um, okay. I think I have added I have added a resh. He's just got his it's his little icon that's not got my color in it. Yep. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, and I guess rather than we'll maybe hold off on not doing that, that's sort of more thought required, perhaps. Uh, more thought required, perhaps, uh, to versions of software. Support asynchronous and sync and synchronous. We even uh, design sprint required. I'm just reading Google's book on that. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think, but I, I would say that this is going to be my things that I will commit to doing over the next next week. Um, and uh, yeah, let, let's. Sorry to have maybe that maybe that discussion needed to continue there with Michael and Aresh. Um, Michael, if you want to add tickets for specific things there, and then we can um, move towards voting on them next week. Uh, Aresh, did you want to turn any of your uh, the refactorings into tickets that you could work on in the next week? Uh, yes. Well, I I, <laughs> I wanted to do the refer to myself in a single pull request, but perhaps I don't know if we should split that. Because this is a subset of all the possible improvements that we can do. Right. Yeah, so and you were saying you were hoping to do all of these in one pull request? Uh, yes, why not? Because it's, well, perhaps it's a bad idea, but I think that if we maintain, if we keep our board, our board clear of those kind of stuff, of mm -hmm. those kind of jobs, or, or nice to have refactored, it will be easier. Yeah, I don't know. I, I agree. It's great to have them all all done. I, I think uh, for the purposes of sort of Michael and I following along and understanding the different things, and and kind of you know interpreting them. Like if there's a big pull request that contains all of these things, yeah, I, uh, them. I could work with Mike and Imper. Uh, yeah, oh, that well, that, you, you you could program it. I mean, for, for me, I would just if if if, if something can be uh, just my style. Is that if something can be broken off and be done in a in a in a, a, a small pull request, then that is less pressure on the person who's reviewing it, if you know what I mean. So uh, yes, it makes sense, especially for features. Uh, right. In this case, with is a refactor, you will see a lot of things anyway. Well, but, yeah, particularly okay. with a refactoring, if it's uh, lots of But ultimately, up to you. I think if you feel Arash, if you feel inspired to to do a pull request on this and get these done. Don't let me stop you. I, I, you know, you're doing amazing stuff here, and and you know maybe pairing with Michael is the way to go. Sorry, Michael, did you want to say something? Oh, I was just going to ask. So you you're reading a book on design sprints, you're saying? Yeah, the the um, O'Reilly book it says. Uh, I just know O'Reilly. It might be. It's a uh, Google design sprints. Uh, it's this book here. Oh, okay. The sprint book. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's the sprint book. Yeah. Interesting. And you, is it good? It starts well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. Well, I guess. So I guess I mean we we could vote on this as one thing, and then. Then you could just start on it and 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 work through it. Uh, I, I guess maybe would you, Arash? You'd rather have this as one ticket and kind of close it with one submission. Uh, well, I don't mind. <laughs> as I say, is I I, am, I will split this if if this were were a feature, a real feature. Right, but because it's something needed to continue working. Uh, I know. Well, if you open few pull requests, uh, in this case, six of or so pull requests, uh, this will uh, be delayed because people will need to merge every every one in mm. in order. And so, but I don't mind if you want to split this or not. But 
Well, I mean, wh wh why, don't, why don't you, why don't we say, um, just start, but like, what I would say is like, I mean, presumably you're, you're gonna, you're not gonna work on all of these things in parallel, like you'll go through making these changes, I guess you might be like making these changes at the same time, and, and then I, afterwards you do this and then I, this and... I think if you make the, the two ones at the same time, you had to, uh, you will have a, you will face with a lot of merging issue, issues. Right, I mean, if, are, if they're in separate pull requests. Yes, uh, if, if they are in separate pull requests, mm. uh, they, they will, somebody who uh, will have to or must merge the conflict. Right, right. Although, although you, can, you, can, you can, like, do a pull request, and then you can build the next pull request off the first pull request. We've yes, you can. So do, do you delay the, the second one until somebody merges the first one? First one. Okay, yeah. well, uh, I, I will separate this in, in different issues. Um, I will start with the first one. Yeah, and and feel free to start votes on them if you if you need, and if not, not. I think you know whatever whatever works really. Um, so is that are, are we are we good then? We've we've done our. We've done uh, our yes, I, I would would like to add another thing. Is, Please. Uh, configuring a staging environment. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I, oh, I've got that. I, I could do this or you. I'm not sure. Perhaps it's a good practice for you to I use think this system. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, so. Definitely. Well, yeah, I, I would say, you know, um, yeah, you can knock off your one ticket there. And um, yeah, I think if you take the lead on the refactoring, and I'll take the lead on the infrastructure things, and I'll reach out to you as I get stuck, if that's, mm -hmm. you know, I'll follow your documentation. And yeah. Okay, it sounds good. Great. Okay. Um, Michael, anything else to add? No, that's it. All right. Great. Wonderful. Um, uh, Vu, I hope that was a fun auditing process there. Um, I'll post my little notes from that into the, uh, the channel there. Um, yeah, and I'll, I mean, I'll be on mine for a bit more now, and then uh, again later on and I'll be I'll see you guys on Slack. Okay, see you then. Thanks so much Arash, really just loving all the work you're doing here and uh, Michael as well, getting you connected up with, with this and to be able to do data analysis on it will be wonderful. All right, thanks. Okay. Bye. 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 Take care. Bye.